Okay, we have a uh, left hand specimen today. We're gonna be plating the middle phalanx on the middle finger with a 1.4 millimeter mini frag set from Arthrex. So you can see we have a middle finger, middle phalanx on a left hand specimen. This is not obviously the approach that I would use. I made this much more extensile for the purposes of, of showing this, but um, certainly as you can tell, uh, and everybody knows with the middle phalanx, the uh, confluence of the extensor mechanism comes dorsal here. And so you could certainly put the plate dorsal, but uh, might irritate the tissues. Uh, most people or a lot of people end up uh, going mid-lateral. Um, we've already simulated a fracture here, and, and I'll show that to you here. You can see the fracture now. We've simulated right through here. This is the uh, head of the middle phalanx. Uh, this is the PIP joint back here. So we've got a nice mid-lateral exposure here. You can tell we're going to plate this with a 1.4 millimeter tine plate. This is what the plate looks like. We'll be using the guide first. This is the guide we use for placing those tines. It's really nice because once you drill those, those holes there, it sits very well inside of the hole, and we'll show how that's done. What I like to do first is I like to place a K-wire and holds this in. So what's nice about that K-wire hole is really holds the guide in place while you're doing the distal drilling. So this is a 1.1 millimeter drill bit. We're just drilling to the far cortex. So now both holes have been drilled. We're gonna take the drill guide off the K-wire and slide the plate over the top. One of the nice things about the set is we have a really nice plate cutter here. The key would be if you wanna cut the one hole off here, we'll put it in the second slot. And you can see how nice and rounded it is. And you have one hole that literally just comes off and nice and atraumatic with regards to the soft tissues. So you can see we just push the plate on to the, to the neck of that middle phalanx, and it slides over the top of the K-wire to keep our position. So now we're gonna drill the compression slot here, just proximal to the K-wire. This will help contour that plate right down to the bone. We have our depth gauge. So you can see what's a really nice feature of this system is that you have a retention sleeve. This is a very small screw. It snaps right on, pulls that right back out. And you can see just how stable that really is on the screwdriver. That capture sleeve really holds it nicely. So we now have a long locking screw for our compression slot. The screw is gonna be slightly larger than we need to really get that compression. Um, we certainly will come back and replace this out at the end with a little shorter screw. This retention sleeve really makes working with these smaller screws so much easier now. And a really nice bite. Okay, we're gonna place the second screw here, which will be one of our locking screws, just proximal to the fracture line. So we're gonna use our depth gauge here and measure. And that's a 10. And now the rest becomes fairly basic with just drilling and filling. And you can see here that we have a variable angled guide that sits nice and center in there, and it allows us our different degrees of freedom with the drill. So if you want to try to cross the fracture line or put one at a little bit of an angle away from the joint, you could do that. And we'll use our depth gauge here to measure our depth. Postoperatively, obviously, uh, we try to get these patients moving very quickly. There's big risk for adhesion, so that's why we have good stable fixation here and the ability to move the patient very quickly. I basically let the soft tissues calm down for about a week, and then I start some gentle, passive range of motion exercises with progression to active within the next couple of weeks after surgery.